I've had a lot of fun in my life trying to change the world in my work and then my passions outside work have been flying and clocks and this is part of my clock collection. I never liked doing what anybody else has ever done and so if I was going to make a clock it had to be completely different. I needed a new way of um, telling time and I wanted the clock then to, to look different and be interesting that would catch people's attention and so I thought it'd be interesting to turn Harrison's invention of a grasshopper escapement which I'm sure only one in a million know how it works, uh, turn it inside out and then enlarge it uh, 50 times. And so instead of being against a little gear the size of a, um, a 50p piece with the little grasshopper on top, um, now the, it's a metre and a half in diameter with uh, a metre chronophage on top so that you could actually see how his invention worked. And so that was the, the basis of starting off on the chronophage. It's quite easy to come up with all sorts of ideas. The difficulty is to change the idea into a practical reality. And this workshop enables you to make prototypes and prove your, your idea and make it into a working uh, model. And then you can see the, act, the invention actually works. People say the most important invention for mankind was the wheel. Um, I think that's untrue. I think the invention which changed mankind most of all was the clock. The wheel is the servant of mankind, but clocks control mankind. And you can't imagine what life was like before you had clocks. Uh, it's everywhere now. It's on your wrist. It's on your telephone. It's on your coffee maker, it's on your television, it's everywhere. It's a completely different world. Not only has he made his own contribution to the history of clockmaking, John C. Taylor is the proud owner of arguably the world's most comprehensive collection of clocks. So this is a fascinating clock made by Azurus Fromentiel. And if you look at it, it's very easy to think that it's saying the time is 20 to 8. But it's not, because if you look very carefully, the minute hand goes round four times in an hour. So you're actually at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's 55 minutes past 7, or 5 minutes to 8. Whereas you wouldn't recognize that. But it's an experimental clock. It's a very, very early clock made in about 1658 by Azurus Fromentiel. So I've taken the hood off the John Harrison uh, clock, um, made in 1726 or thereabouts, and it's the first mechanism in the world designed to be low friction. But if you, if you look at the, the mechanism here, it has the first grasshopper escapement. And so the whole thing was made by a carpenter in the early 18th century and it was more accurate than any clock made in London at the time and became the most accurate clock in the world for 150 years after it was made. What inspired me to produce the Chronophage? I suppose uh, modern art. I complain about modern art because I think a lot of it is the uh, king's clothes, that there's nothing to it. Um, but it's one of my characteristics. It's no good complaining about something unless you're prepared to do something about it. And so I set myself the task to think of how to, to create something which was modern art and yet uh, actually did something. And time is not on your side. It's rather scary. So I changed the cuddly image of a Walt Disney grasshopper into rather frightening time eater and um, I thought it'd be fun if in a minute he slowly opened his jaws uh, wider and wider and on the 59th second of every minute he went ah and he 
got that minute, they chewed it up, they swallowed it, and then you could never get it back. to judge one's own inventions. And uh, you're always very proud of what you've done. Uh, but the only proof of the pudding is in the eating. And if other people uh, appreciate what you've done, then it gives you a, an even greater satisfaction. <laughs>